Oh gosh, we're at the Millennial Park. Camera just turned on. Hey, tight watch. <laughs> no, right. Johnson's shop here. Zach just unfolded the, the strip till machine so we can start working on that, putting manifold or splitters and IES recon blockage system on there. Craig right now is prepping the hydraulic drive conversion kit, which is right here. You can see that we've got the harnesses. We've got the motors with the brackets pre-assembled already. We've got some different mounting. Here's the camera kit that I'm gonna install today in the tanks. Craig is gonna be removing this shaft right away. And then once that shaft is gone, we're gonna remove these transmissions. The transmissions are coming off. We'll use the existing mounting plates to mount our new mounting plates, which are, by the way, in stainless steel. So that looks pretty sweet, right? Okay, so while Craig does the cart back here, the hydraulic drive conversion kit, and I get on the camera system, Jesse and Adam are checking out how to best set up the IAS recon blockage system and the splitters that we're gonna to convert to stainless steel. So what do you guys got going on here? We're, we're laying out the strategy for where to mount the ECU so we can get uh, sensors picked up and collected in a common point. So each of the sensor hoses only has about a 36 inch hose to it. And so since these are 30 inch spacing, you're not gonna get a lot of them. So we're, we're trying to do something with the length of the ECU as well as with the length of the hoses. Uh, to try to make us as economical as we possibly can be. The goal is to only do three ECUs on the whole uh, the whole system here. Okay, so with 12 how sensors. much is each ECU? If we have to use more, it's another... You're right, so I mean with harnesses and everything like that that goes with each ECU, I mean you're looking at probably 650 or something like yeah, that. Yeah, so there's so considerable savings to, li to lay this out more efficiently and, and get as many, or as few ECUs as possible, yep. And here, is a beautiful thing. So this stainless steel splitter is going to replace these John Deere ones. Now these John Deere ones may look just fine now, but being this is a fertilizer applicator, it'll be a few short years before they are corroded. So we might as well just get these on right away and they doesn't have to worry about them for the life of the machine. Craig, when we walked in today, you said there's a problem and it had to do with something with not having an auger. Or yes. Right? When this cart, because it uses it for fertilizer, they normally fill out a tender truck, so this cart is missing the auger. And we typically... Which is normally right here. Right. Yeah. Right, right here. We typically, there's a diverter valve right here that you can divert your flow from your uh, fan to the auger, and we tie into our hydraulics for our hydraulic drive at this connection. They, they put a diverter on the back here because he does that on uh, winch for his anhydrous. So we'll just be a little bit different on the plumbing maybe. Um, we'll just come back here instead of well, over there. I see there's a union here. I still might be able to key in here. Okay. But I gotta see what we have for keys, because normally there's a fitting here to flip. So I'm not exactly sure. Yeah. But we'll see. Okay. Well, not a showstopper <laughs> though, right? Let's go check on... Uh, Jesse and Zach here. So how are things going over here? I think oh, well. I guess I'm holding up the show. As usual. I was busy, you know, <laughs> vlogging. Yeah, right. So what are you planning to do here? We are dropping the meter housing to inspect the Okay. But we just kit. we just dropped this meter housing a year ago? Yeah, yeah, a year two, and a half, year and ago. half ago during the summer. It does feel faintly familiar. We're thinking that the leaking problem is up in the funnel weldment seal area. And with all this corrosion showing, that's probably a good guess. So these are the parts that will replace the ones in there. We'll cross our fingers. This will solve the problem. All right, Zach. <laughs> but this foam seal right here can get eroded over time. It's almost like it melts from the 
fertilizer. We've seen it where it's it's either half the size or, or even nearly missing. It's just a slimy goo in there. So it's just a really good idea to get that changed out. Even if you have stainless, you may have to change that seal every once in a while. It's probably gonna be 10 years or so, but it's something to always keep in mind and always be watching for is air leaks anywhere in the system, especially there. Adam here has done a real good job of finishing this whole side. You can see that he's got the sensors here for these two end rows with the splitter. And then these ones do have a splitter. They come up to here and these sensors are here. So we've been able to get so far four rows into each ECU. We can have up to 24 in there, but you can see that the hose length is the issue. You can't have too long of hose, otherwise the signal isn't very good. These are acoustic sensors. So as product comes through here and hits this plate, it's creating a sound. It's a sound like a stethoscope, like when you're at the doctor and they're listening to your heart. And then that sound is transmitted up this rubber hose. This is just a rubber hose, so no wires, no issues there. It's gonna last a long time and not have durability issues. And so then it picks up in the TCU, which then wirelessly transmits it to the cab up there on your iPad. And that's how it does the blocker system. How's it going up here, Adam? Good. Uh, I've got one of the Y tubes in already. We're gonna pull these off. Uh, right now, it's honestly just easier to cut the hose off than try to string it all the way through. So, when we finish this video, I'm gonna have Matt throw me up the hose cutter here. All right. I better get back to work. Thank you. All right, guys, we're gonna update you. We just had lunch. Jesse and Zach are finishing up putting the funnel and the top plate in and stainless, replacing the seal. Craig is in between things, he's helping them. He just set up the system in the tractor. He set up the screen um, for the newer dry rate controller. Thank you. Yeah, I was thinking about it. You guys having a little like bonfire down here? Yeah. I'm oh. still digesting lunch. Oh yeah. Breathing in the fumes? Yep. So on this meter housing here, uh, we actually rebuilt it about a year and a half ago so there's no need to change it it's still in decent condition although it will rot out and will have to be changed eventually we did put half of disconnects in that are stainless so those are going to work just fine why not just use it until it's gone maybe in a couple years then it'll be corroded you can see that the rear one was replaced we did that at the same time so here's that still looking really good yeah look at that we have a co-op I also ran. And if you're wondering about that install, go check out Zach's channel called uh, Upgrades for the Deep Bander. It was about a year and a half ago, September 2019. Before Just before I, I went to Russia, the day before I went to Russia, I was here helping them install this and get it done so he would be able to fix that. So. This is cool guys, in case you wonder where this came from. Of course, we didn't make the system, but we certainly are the dealer for it. The number one dealer in the world for two years in a row. We sell more of these systems than anyone, and there's a reason. We just focus on it and we do a good job. We, in fact, we hired the guy who, uh, who invented, or who designed it, who did a lot of the engineering on it 10 years ago. So now you just make it go where you want it to go. That plate looks a lot better, guys. Yep. Yeah, smooth. Looks a lot better than that one. The Minnesota Millennial Farmer Plenum is for sale. Give this a call if you'd like to buy it. We will broker the deal and take our high commission. <laughs> all right, so Zach decided he's gonna change out all of his pipes this time, not just leave the one straight. So. We're gonna get this one and add it into the cart here. Get it all bulletproof. Okay, I'm gonna show you something important here. 
I'm gonna show you something important here when it comes to installing your blockage monitor. Now, we're out here at Zach's and an important thing to note is the serial number. So you can see it right on the box right there. And really what you have to pay attention to is those last four, four digits or, or letters. So it goes numbers, then letters. So if you look at these two here, we've got IE9L and IE9M. I placed M over on the far side there. L is going in the middle. And we've got K right there, KLM. So anyway, that's really important to know. It just helps us set up. If you ever lose your configuration, it just makes configuration so much quicker. Another thing that I could show you here, the two that is kind of nice about these ECUs and about the way the system sets up. So you can kind of see right here that I just have one lone tube hooked up. My other tubes are actually hooked up on the opposite side right here. And so this is, this is one, two, three, and four. Anyway, so I have this one hooked up into port 13. Now all you gotta do is you just gotta change it on your config inside the app. Uh, super easy to do and it actually helped us so that we could reach all four of these sensors that are on here. Cause it's about 36 inches and really about 30 inches of usable too. So anyway, I hope that helps. In some shiny, shiny stainless. So as uh, these guys wrap up and pack up our tools, Zach's gonna start the tractor here. We're gonna test the cart, make sure the fan turns on, the meters turn and everything. And we've got the wireless blockage system. The lights are blinking. So that's good. So we've, we've set up the IS recon system in the cab there. We got a leaker. Whoops. That's why we do tests. Uh -oh. I hope Zach will forgive us for dripping on his floor. Well, that's an easy fix. We, we want to put the meter cartridges in so then we can actually test the sensors as well. And you can see here that Craig is jogging the switches to get the motors to turn, to get the fluid through them. So we're watching these pinch points to make sure nothing gets pinched in them and the hoses all work out. So far so good. All right, Zach, don't tell me I never gave you anything. <laughs> There's your iPad. It's a box? Well, do you? Are, are you an Android guy? Or I wonder guy? what it is. He's like a kid I'm, at Christmas. A box! A, a box. box! Oh, gosh! I need to know the Apple ID and the password. Yeah, so then you okay. can set up your iPad. Okay. All right, well, we had a great day out here. Uh, spent about 10 hours putting the whole thing together. I think it looks really nice. Has some good stainless steel on it. Zach was great to work with. I mean, he is a millennial, of course, like almost all of us. Right. Uh, I even touched a wrench. Hey, that's <laughs> the way hurt. you got to do it, right it there. It's very cold. Yep. <laughs> well, sounds good. Well, it was a lot of fun to be out here, and uh, hopefully, you had fun watching. Yeah. <laughs>